Hello everyone. So this is going to be my first video in a series of super simple ties for people who want to learn how to tie Euro jig nymphs um, using the least materials possible um, and they're really effective flies. These are flies that everybody should have in their box um, because they just work. So I've got a size 14 wide gape jig hook in my vise. You don't have to use a wide gape hook, that's just personal preference. And every time you go to start, make sure that your bead is the right way up. That's the wrong way up. That's the right way up. You can see how it sits forward above the hook eye. So I'm going to be using this thread today. You can use whatever you like. Uh, I'm just using this because it's a similar colour to the fly that I'm going to be tying. But you can use black thread. You can use whatever you like really. So I'm going to start my thread behind the bead. Wrap down a little bit. Wrap back up, and that just secures the bead in place, it's not going to move about. Get rid of this piece now. We're going to tie in our rib, which is a medium sized copper wire just to match my bead. Again, you can use whatever color you have. I'm only using copper because I prefer a copper bead on most pheasant tails. I say most pheasant tails because you can make them in a variety of colours and sometimes it just looks a bit better with something else. So stick your wire in the slot of your bead and then tie it down on the side of your hook. It's usually better to tie it in on the side away for yourself because then it's out of the way. So bring your thread down and touch and turns until we get to the back of the hook where it just starts to bend away. Now we're going to get our pheasant tail and use maybe about four or five strands. So if you pull it 90 degrees for the stem and then tear it off you'll find that your tips are nice and lined up. So to check the length of your tail, measure it against the length of your body. And you want it to be roughly that, possibly a little bit shorter. I prefer mine a little bit shorter. So I'll just hold that on top of the hook and I'll use a pinching loop. So I'll pinch my thread between my fingers and then pull it down. Now at this point, it's not totally secured in, so we can have a, a look and see if we're happy with the length of it. If we're not, we can shuffle it about a bit, pull it in either direction, and then when we're happy, just put another turn over the top. Now, I always like to put a wrap underneath the tails or tags or whatever on my flies just to kind of prop it up a little bit and keep it in place. So now a little wrap over the top and bring your pheasant tail back and then wrap back up the hook to the back of the bead. So now we're going to wrap our pheasant tail in the opposite direction to our thread. From wrapping the thread that way, we're going to wrap the pheasant tail that way. So just bring it down and be very careful of your hook eye, your hook eye, your hook point, because pheasant tail is notoriously fragile. And if you catch that on the point of your hook, it will snap and you'll be very annoyed. This happens a lot with pheasant tail as well. The strands will kind of separate and want to do their own thing. So just take your time, 
gather it together, get it to do what you want it to do, and then start wrapping it forward. Bring it all the way up to behind the bead, and then put your thread over the top to hold it in place. Now, because this is going the opposite way to the thread, what can sometimes happen is that the thread starts to unravel it. So just be aware of that and keep the pressure going in this direction towards the bead. So put it behind. And then in front and then behind and then in front and it's completely secure now and it's not going to go anywhere so now you can cut it off nice and close now we're going to rib it and we're going to put the rib in the opposite direction to the pheasant tail so in the same direction as the thread so I'm going to take this under and do some nice evenly spaced turns on the way up the body. Usually you'll end up with about four or five turns. Then when you get to the top, hold your wire there and put your thread over the top. So again, go behind, in front, and then behind and in front. And now we can just get the wire and wiggle it about a bit in circles and it will just snap off. Let's have a look. Yep, that looks fine to me. Now all we have to do is put a little bit of dub in. You can use peacock herald but you know that that's the traditional way of doing it. With this style of bug usually we use some dubbing like this peacock eye this one is you get different shades of peacock black peacock blue peacock whatever it's much of a muchness go for what you prefer you'll use a lot of it when you start tying these flies so it's worth the investment of buying yourself a packet so dub it onto the thread be relatively sparing with it um, because it's so easy to use too much and then push it up to the top and wind it behind the bead don't worry too much if you've got some stray bits poking out here and there because we can tidy that up in a minute so now all we have to do is finish the fly um, I'll get a little bit of varnish Stick that on my thread and when I whip finish it, the varnish is going to soak into the thread and keep it all together, stop it from unravelling. So, one, two, three. And for good measure, another one, one, two, three. So that's it. Pull it tight and we can get rid of this now, snip it off nice and close and have a wee look if you've got straggly bits that don't look too tidy just trim them off with your scissors until you're happy with how it looks. There we go, quite happy with that. This will catch you loads of fish. They love a simple pheasant tail, um, as well as using the, the peacock dubbing if you want something a bit brighter. Orange spectra dubbing does really, really well as well, depending on the conditions. But these flies you can make in any colours, with any colour bead, any colour wire, any colour dubbing, any colour pheasant tail. As you can see, you get all sorts of different colours 
the pheasant tail. Here are some examples. Hopefully my camera is focusing for you. <clears throat> but this is your bog standard plain pheasant tail. And hopefully it'll catch you many, many fish. There you go.